Hello, and welcome to another day in Dr. Scott's accounting class. I am here today to talk about bank reconciliation. In your chapters, it may be internal cash control. Um, it might be listed as bank reconciliation or reconciling bank statements. Either of those topics will be what we will address today. So today I have an actual problem that I will read from and hopefully you can follow along. But beginning, we always start our financial statements with a three line heading. In this situation, the company is Betsy Doe Company. This is a bank reconciliation. And today is October 15th. Okay? So, we set our statement up. This is the bank side. And this is the book side. Okay? Bank being bank statement, books being our books for our company. So, we start off first with the deposits to the bank account as recorded on the bank statement are compared to the deposit slips retained by the company. It is noted that the last deposit of $400 occurred after banking hours on the day the date of the bank statement and therefore has not been recorded by the bank. So it has not been recorded. We need to add that to the bank side. What that is called deposits and training. And that is $400. Okay, next it says, checks returned with the bank statement are compared to the checks written and listed in the checkbook. This comparison shows that there are checks outstanding to $1,456. So that needs to be subtracted from the bank side. It has not cleared the bank yet. and that is outstanding checks. Okay, the ending balances on the statement in the company's books are determined. The ending bank statement balance is exactly 10,129 whereas the books show $9,000. So they gave us our balances, 10,129 dollars, and the book size is 9,000. Which is why you can see we need to do the bank reconciliation because they don't equal. Okay, for number four it says, other information contained on the bank statement that the company did not know. They collected a note of $180 plus a $20 interest from a customer. So we didn't know that they had collected money for us. So we're going to add that note collected for $200. It also says a check from Frank Oni for $120 previously deposited by us has been returned as an NSF. The bank charged us a $25 fee. So we have to subtract
a NSF check. For $120, and then the bank fee is $25. Okay, lastly it says there is a difference of $18. They found out that check number 141 was written for $235 for advertising expense and cleared the bank for 235, but we recorded it as 253. So we have money coming out that didn't need to be. So we need to add the $18. Okay, so now we have to add up our amounts and subtract what needs to be subtracted to find out what we come up with. So you take $10,129, you add the 400, and you subtract the 1456. Giving you a minute, you should come up with 9,000 and $73. Okay, let's go on our book side. Starting off with $9,000, adding 218 and subtracting 145, we should also come up with 9,073. So here, you have reconciled your bank statement. The balances should be $9,073. There are entries that are included in your bank reconciliation. For bank reconciliation, you can only write journal entries for the book side. We can't change what the bank has done. The bank has its own paperwork. We can handle our information. So these entries will need a journal entry to show these changes. So the addition of the note collected, the error made, and the NSF check and bank fee. These are entries that need to be included in your general journal to be posted to then reflect in your trial balance. Again, Thank you for stopping along. Thank you for going through with this with me. And I will see you next time. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you later.